One of the many aspects of normal life that the COVID-19 pandemic took away was being able to enjoy live musical performances. With easing of lockdowns and restrictions in many parts of the world, performers can entertain audiences once again, but concerns about spreading the virus remain. Now, researchers reporting in ACS Environmental Gold have studied aerosols made by playing wind instruments, singing, and acting. Through these studies, they developed recommendations to reduce the risk of COVID transmission during live performances. Early in the pandemic, COVID-19 outbreaks from choir performances indicated that singing carries a potential infection risk. But less is known about the risks of airborne infection from wind instruments. To help keep performers, audiences, and music students safe, Taya Stockman, Shelley Miller, and colleagues wanted to examine the production and flow of aerosols from various musical activities and also test ways to help minimize the risk. Aerosols, which are suspensions of tiny liquid droplets in air, are how the virus that causes COVID-19 is thought to spread. The researchers visualized air jets coming from wind instruments such as the clarinet. They measured the size and velocity of the jets as well as the amounts of aerosol and carbon dioxide. They found that aerosol concentrations coming from the bell of a clarinet were similar to those from singing. Placing a surgical mask over the clarinet's bell substantially reduced air jet velocities and lengths and decreased aerosol concentrations in front of the mask. The researchers did the same experiments with actors and singers. Shown here is the airflow coming from the mouth of a singer without a mask. And with a mask. The mask reduced aerosol concentrations and almost completely blocked airflow in the horizontal direction. However, some air leaked out of the top of the mask, emphasizing the importance of proper mask fit. The team then used these measurements to model viral flow in indoor and outdoor environments. The areas in red indicate the highest concentrations of virus. The models indicate that by keeping indoor performances at less than 30 minutes and outdoor performances at less than 60 minutes, the risk of airborne COVID-19 infection can be reduced. The researchers say that these findings could help musical rehearsals and performances resume in a safer manner for musicians and audiences.